Yeah, it's not about climate change. It's about uh, the denial of the cost of transition, which is, I know, something you've believed and we've talked about for the best part of 10 years here on the telly. And what about, as uh, Matt Canavan showed just a bit earlier in the program, that uh, Anthony Albanese has spent a lot of time, you know, we saw him on the float there in India, and India's a very important partnership. He's done a whole bunch of speeches, but never mentioned the C word, coal, which is 70% of our <laughs> exports to India. Does that surprise you? No, no, of course it doesn't. I mean, it's like a scene out of Yes Minister, uh, you know, in the briefings that he's getting from the public servants. Uh, they're saying, well, Prime Minister, you know, we're a massive exporter of coal to India. Uh, the exports uh, underpin our economy in Australia and India can't keep the lights on. They can't pull people out of poverty without our coal. But don't talk about it. Uh, don't mention it. Uh, and it's it's just surreal. And the Prime Minister's trying to play to an inner city audience back in Australia. But I, I think more people, frankly, the penny's dropping, that uh, the government's talking out of both sides of their mouth. And you've got Tanya Plibersek and Chris Bowen running around saying that coal and gas must finish tomorrow. Uh, and you've got somebody like Madeleine King, who comes from Western Australia, is out there saying, well, you know, coal and gas is absolutely necessary to keep the lights on. So uh, eventually they get caught out. And I think the Prime Minister's been pretty tricky in his language in India. And uh, again, I think most common sense Australians can realise that, uh, you know, the Prime Minister's trying to pull the wool over their eyes, but um, I think they're smarter than that. Just finally on The Voice, uh, the Sydney Morning Herald was leaked. A potential negotiating point here that is apparently being worked on, which is to add even extra words to the words none of us have seen just yet about what we'll be voting on later in the year, making it absolutely explicit that Parliament remains the sole authority to make laws and also to be the one to deal with legal consequences of anything that might come out of The Voice. Is this sort of of, um, the move towards compromise or does it further complicate things, what was being leaked today? It, it's a really good question, Paul. I, I, I don't know what is going on here because Australians are demanding the detail. They, they just want from the Prime Minister honesty, to be honest. Uh, they want him to lay out what it is they're asking the people to support. If you're changing the constitution, that's a big deal. Not like legislation. Uh, if legislation can be amended, it can be supported, it can be knocked back, uh, it can be built on, it can be dispensed with. If you put something into the Constitution, you know, as your viewers well know, that is a very significant change. And so people are just saying to the Prime Minister, well, just be upfront and straight with us and give us the detail and we'll make the decision about whether it's another layer of bureaucracy or if it's going to help Indigenous people. And so far they haven't given that detail. But I actually think it's quite remarkable that given the, the group that is most influential uh, with the government in relation to uh, to the voice and and the way in which the question will be constructed, etc., has been dealing with the issue for months and months and months. They're going to deliver a final report Thursday of this week, and yet they're only given legal advice by the Solicitor General Friday of last week, yeah, after on. they've had months of deliberation and not to get the legal advice. I just think it's quite remarkable. So. Uh, I, I hope the Attorney-General can explain that, but I don't see why you would withhold the information or the legal advice from uh, from that group when they're about to report. Uh, it's, it's putting the cart before the horse, but um, a lot of what this government does uh, is exactly that. And I think there are a lot of decisions they're making at the moment that uh, aren't you know, going to impact in a positive way uh, in our country, particularly, as you point out, for those that have really staring down the, the barrel of uh, lots of cost of living pressures over the course of this next year.